Hello and welcome back to Diary of an Airstream. Uh, today we're starting out with fixing a problem that we created by not doing our research. We had done a few spots of polishing where we needed to reattach things like the letters and the logos and somehow we'd gotten away with it so far but when Jared went to do some more polishing for places where he was going to put on patches uh, the polish just turned to hard plastic when he got started buffing and we couldn't figure out why and we did a little bit of research and it turns out there is a clear thin coat of plastic over the entire airstream that we didn't know about and somehow we'd gotten away with the little bit of polishing that we had done so far um, but for the rest of the airstream in order to polish it moving forward we needed to remove that plastic coating so he is painting the whole surface with a plastic stripper and then he's going to power wash that off and remove that clear coat from the Airstream so we can finish it up with that nice mirror polish. There are a lot of different polishes available depending on how bad off the surface of your Airstream is. Um, because ours was in pretty good shape, we decided to go with three different levels of polish. It's kind of like the grit of a sandpaper. So you're seeing Jared doing those three different layers on this one spot just so that we can get it buffed up and put in the patches that we need. We got the butyl tape attached. This stuff's really nice. Um, just went on really well, as you see. I mean, even in a circle, we were able to get that formed on it great. Um, for those of you who watched the video on installing the window, we probably could have used this to install the window. That might have been even better than the gasket or even clock. Um, okay, make sure we get the drain hole down at the bottom. Don't want to do this twice. There we go. So we'll drill through that and rivet. I decided to go with five thirty seconds bit. Um, so we're going, I got three different rivet sizes, that's the middle one, and I'm just going to work on putting in, I think, two rivets first, just to make sure we're able to get through all right. Here we go. And I'm planning on putting a large flange rivet in top rivet, but a large flange. Basically, it's just really wide up here at the top. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it's really wide right there, which is nice for pressing down something like this. Let's see if we can even get it through in there. All right, let's get the rig. Yesterday we worked on the electrical system for the towing of this trailer here and one of the problems that we ran into after we wired up everything for the tail lights, the brake light, the, uh, uh, the reverse light was that we found out that the lights don't actually fit in the frame here. Not sure why, they're from Airstream, they're supposed to fit, but they don't. So what we came up with was this cool idea of basically I got a four inch bit and we drilled out these spacers that there's actually some glue on it already. Meredith's gonna put that in here. And so we just put that little spacer on there so that we can push the light out just a little bit from the frame. And you see there's a hole in here so we can run all the wiring through there. And don't worry about the hole around the edge. We're gonna caulk that up and it should be sealed up just fine. And in the end, it'll look like these guys over here. After we put the two spacers in place, I have Meredith standing on the outside of the Airstream and I'm just gonna drill two small pilot holes here so that I can put some screws in and make sure 
that these wood spacers are held firmly in place. Uh, I'm gonna put screws in it real quick. Now Meredith is just gonna drill a little pilot hole through each of the lights. They're already taped up. And then she's just gonna hand screw in this little screw. So it's threaded, but not, uh, it won't uh, actually grip inside of the light. It'll only grip when it goes into the wood. The next day, we had a chill work day with Corey and Daniel, and Daniel learned how to rivet, making him the first person other than Jared to rivet something onto our Airstream. It's about 8 a.m. here. We have filled up the gray tanks, you see right there, through the, uh, through the drain hole for the uh, bathroom sink. We've got the system totally closed off right now. Um, so that uh, we can test, pressure test the tanks and make sure everything is holding well. We have the water filled up so that it's just barely into the black part of the valve here. And I am not seeing any water leaking so far. Uh, this was of course also a major test of the, uh, um, our design for retrofitting this for black tanks, I mean for gray tanks. But uh, so far everything seems to be holding. Tanks aren't falling through the floor, so that's good. Uh, but everything looks great. We'll see how things go. I'll test it for probably about two hours. So today's task is getting the subfloor replaced, which is something we've been looking forward to for weeks, because uh, it means we can finally stop bouncing around on all the beams and moving the plywood in and out every other day. Um, so that's gonna be a huge, huge change, and we've got a few friends coming over to help us get started on that soon. So after I filmed that last clip, we started working on putting in the subfloor and the first piece took us all day. It was a booger. And so I kind of forgot to film anything else, but I'm offering you this piece offering of a time lapse of Jared putting in the insulation in the belly pan before he places the next piece of subfloor. Basically, Jared worked the whole rest of the next week replacing the subfloor and putting in the insulation and also installing the new wheel wells. We have another use for the jack down here. Uh, trying to get the wheel well in the place. And you see we had to slide it under that other piece of wood and we were able to do that with the help of this jack here. So we're able to get the uh, wheel well positioned properly. The other side fit just fine. This one was a little tougher. All right, we've shown you before how there's a little bit of a gap where the shell has settled down sometimes on sometimes even below the frame of the trailer and unfortunately the uh, the wood the plywood is supposed to be sandwiched in between those two layers the shell and the frame uh, so the only way to do it to actually be able to get the plywood into that uh, in, in between those two layers is we have to lift up the shell so that's what we're doing here. We have the jack from my truck. Uh, nothing special there. Um, and then we have here a 4x4, which we set on there. Make sure that's centered on the jack. And then I'll show you the spot and the ceiling. Uh, 
that we've selected for doing this. We've used it a couple times in the back. Uh, there's a few spots that are, I think, a little bit better suited for a jack. So we'll just barely tighten it up against the ceiling. Not quite centered there. So there we go. Now we're going to take our level, which should be right here, and just a rubber mount. I'm just going to check, make sure we're vertical. If we're not, we'll fix it. Looks like we're pretty close to vertical. So basically, as I take out some of these screws now in the side, this will help to support the shell and make sure that it doesn't crash down. So now that the plywood is in the channel all the way around, we're going around and if you can see, we're putting bolts up through the subfloor and then it runs into the metal channel of the shell. So that bolt comes up and through the shell and then we also go around and screw the plywood into the frame. Um, the struts of the frame underneath so it's a little bit of a piece by piece process isn't it because mm -hmm. it's like shell to plywood plywood to frame mm -hmm. i just realized i was filming your chest there nice. jared spent the rest of the week securing the subfloor to the frame below then reattaching the belly pan to the shell on the outside then reapplying the trim which creates the waterproof barrier on the exterior of the airstream as you can imagine, we also followed that up with several layers of caulk to try to increase the waterproofness of the whole shell frame belly pan combo. Overall, this week was a huge step forward as we can now finally stop balancing on the struts of the frame and move forward with really constructing the interior of the Airstream.